Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson three of unit three. Um, it is about polynomials. <clears throat> so polynomials have uh, more than two parts to it, essentially. Um, we are going to be working with expressions and not equations, which is a little bit different from, um, one, from units one and two. Um, I'll explain what that means. So an expression, uh, an expression, see if I can spell this right, double S. An expression, expression, I should have an R, there we go. Um, no equal sign. So for example, 3x is an expression. There is no equal sign uh, versus an equation where there is an equal sign, something like 3x equals 12. We would be able to know that x is 4 because 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, so there's an equal sign here uh, and there's no equal sign. So has equal sign. Um, so we're going to talk about expressions. Um, so a polynomial is an expression containing one or more terms. So a monomial has one term. Um, this right here would be a monomial. 3x, and there's only one piece to it. Uh, a binomial has two terms. So something like 3x plus 2y, or uh, minus x squared y minus 3. Um, you can see that there are two parts to that one, and that there are two parts to that one. So those are binomials. Um, there is the next type as well. Uh, they are trinomials. And I'm sure you could figure out uh, what a trinomial means. It means it has three portions. So like 3x plus 2y minus 14. It has three parts to it. Each part is broken up by a plus or an equal sign. So 3x, 2y, minus 14. Uh, you can have more than that. If there's four terms, we just call it a polynomial after that. So when we have an expression that has like terms, um, we can combine them. And these variables have to have um, not only the same symbol, but they have to have the same exponent. Uh, for example, 3x squared uh, and 4x squared are allowed to be combined because they are both x squared. That would be 7x squared. Something that would uh, not be allowed um, to be combined would be 3x squared and 4x because we have an x squared here and an, only an x here. This cannot be combined together. Uh, something like minus 7ab uh, and minus ab. The terms are the same and the exponents are the same, so that can be combined. Um, minus 7ab uh, and ab squared cannot because those two are not the same. So that's something that is important to remember. Um, as we move into these problems because we are going to need to be able to combine like terms and know what like terms are. So um, you might take some review from grade 9 math, but uh, combining like terms is going to be very common here. Um, so let's get into some actual problems, some things that we might actually need to do um, in this section. So expanding polynomials. When we're given a polynomial, um, that has brackets and a number outside it, we are going to uh, apply that number through the brackets. We're going to multiply it. So if we've got 4 times 7x plus 2, we are going to multiply this 4 by both of those numbers. So we have 28x plus 4 times 2 is 8. Um, that is all you need to do whenever you're asked to expand uh, a polynomial. You are going to uh, make sure there are no brackets 
and you're going to combine all like terms. So we've got another one, n times 5n minus 3. The n is going to be multiplied by both terms. Uh, so 5n times n is 5n squared. Minus 3 times n is minus 3n. That's it. We're done. Um, we can do the next one. Minus 3c times 2c minus 4d. So we're going to make sure that we multiply the numbers, but we also need to multiply the variables. Uh, they're kind of two separate entities. So this is going to be multiplied by both of these. Minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, and c times c is c squared. We then have minus 3 times minus 4, which is plus 12, and then c times d, well that's just c d. So we are multiplying the numbers, but we're also multiplying the variables, um, and then just writing them all in a line here. There, eventually there will be more, but um, for now, we just have a couple, nice and easy. Let's see, next thing we're going to do, oh, let's back up, we can't see it all. There we go. So we are going to also be able to go the other way around. You can imagine if you were given this, right here, and you were asked to go backwards to here, what would we do? So that's what we're going to talk about next. Um, we are going to need to know what multiples are, which we talked about in a previous lesson, uh, as well as factors. Um, so in algebra, when we talk about expanding, we are pulling a factor out. Uh, we are pulling either a, a common number, uh, a common variable, out so that it makes the interior, the part that is inside the brackets, it look, makes it look simpler. Um, let's see, let's get into it here. Just like dividing is the, rever is the reverse of multiplying, factoring is the reverse of expanding. So right now we've been expanding, um, now we're going to factor. We are going to pull things out knowing that um, knowing certain numbers and certain variables have factors. Let's get into it. We have an example 3d plus 6 and we are going to go backwards towards something that has brackets. So we're going to look for a common factor between these two parts in this binomial. I see that 3 can be divided out of the first part and 3 can be divided out of the second part. So I'm going to write this as 3 bracket well, what times 3 gets me 3d? Well, just d. Plus, what times 3 gets me 6? 3 times 2 gets me 6. So this is what I'm left over with when I factor it. If you want to check to see if you got it right, you can expand, which is going backwards, and multiplying the 3 times both of these. Let's try that to see if we got it. 3 times d equals 3d. And 3 times 2 is 6. Those are the same. That means that our check is correct. We have done this one correctly. Um, let's move on to the next problem. We have 5e squared plus 6e. Now, when I check out the numbers, I don't see a common factor that I can pull out except for 1. So it looks like those are going to have to stay where they are. Um, but I noticed that they both have at least one e. So let's factor that out. e bracket, what times e would get me 5e squared? Be 5e. What times e would get me 6e? Well, that must be 6. Again, you can multiply this through to check to see if you got it right. E times 5e would equal 5e squared. E times 6 is 6e. Those are correct. That means my check is correct. Everything is good. I have factored it properly. Let's continue here. We've got a couple of more, and then there are some for you to try on your own. They can get more and more difficult, more and more complicated as we go along. So let's do some more. 5f squared minus 10f. 
Uh, I see that for the numbers I can pull out a 5 and there is also one F that is common between the two terms. So let's do that. 5F. What times 5F gets me 5F squared? Well, I just need an F. What times 5F gets me 10F, negative 10F? I would need a negative 2. Again, I can multiply through to find out if I'm right. 5F times F is 5F squared. 5F times minus 2 is minus 10F. That is correct. So I highly recommend um, doing the checks to see if you get it right, if you're at all um, unsure. Let's continue. We have 6H squared minus 12H plus 3. With this problem, uh, there is no common variables because this one's got two H's, this one's got one, but this one's got none. So they don't share any common variables, but they do share three as a common factor. So I pull three out the front. Two uh, H squared would be left. That's what I would need to multiply by. Um, three times minus four H would get me minus 12 H and then plus one. One times three gets me three. Definitely go ahead and check that. Let's do another one. Uh, we've got 20 J to the power of four, K to the power of three, minus 30 J squared, K to the power of four, plus 25 J cubed, K squared. So we're gonna go at this systematically. We are going to find out what we can pull out for numbers, for J's, and then for K's. If I look at 20, 30 and 25, I know that the greatest common factor between them is five. So let's pull that out. Uh, five would be the number. Uh, if I look at J's, the highest number of J's that I have is two. So I would take those out. And the highest number of K's I have is two. So let's pull that out. I'm going to then write in what needs to be multiplied by that to get our numbers. Well. 4 times 5 gets me to 20. I need two more j's and I need one more k to go from 2 to 4 and 2 to 3. I then need to subtract 5 times what gets me 30. That'd be 6. I have enough j's, so I don't need to have any j's there, but I'm missing two k's. So I need to have k squared. I am then going to add 5 times what gets me 25, that would be 5. I need to add another j, because I've only got 2. I need to get to 3. And then my k's are just fine. I've already got two of them. Um, so that would be our answer. Let's multiply through to double check to make sure. 5 times 4 is 20. j, there's 4 of those. I add the exponents. k, there's 3 of those. That part is correct. 5 times minus 6 is minus 30. I've got two j's, because that's all I have here. There's none over here. And I add 2 plus 2 is 4. That one is correct. And then I need to go 5 times 5 is 25. Um, I've got 1j plus 2j's. That's 3j's. And I've got 2k's. And that is correct as well. So I have done that problem correctly have factored everything out. This is our answer. This is our check. There's one more situation just to keep you guys on your toes, like this one. Uh, 7y minus 11mn plus 15x squared. If I look at this expression, um, 7 and 11 are both prime numbers. That means that they don't share anything in common other than 1. So there's nothing that I can pull out to factor in terms of a number. But we don't necessarily need a number. Sometimes we can work, out, work it out um, with variables, only variables being factored out. Now let's see if they have any types of variables in common. This one's x, this one's m and n, and this one's y. Well, they don't have anything in common. Whenever there's nothing that you can factor out, um, that is known as a prime expression. Just like a prime number is a number where you can't factor anything out except for one, like 3, 5, 7, 11, 
17, 19, 23, 29, 37. Those numbers as you go up. Um, there's nothing that can be factored out other than one and the number. Same thing here. One and the expression are the only things that can be factored out. Um, there are some tried on your owns. There's three tried on your owns for you to do. So there's two of them, and I'll just scroll down. You can pause where you need to to get the third one if you don't have the booklet. There's the third one. But um, try these on your own, and then unpause the video, and we will do them together. Okay, let's do this. Uh, we have 8n plus 22. Now, I'm going to be factoring out the common number uh, and variable. There is no variable in the second part, so it's just a number. What number um, is a factor of both 8 and 22? Uh, 4 doesn't work. Um, 5, 6, no, not 8. Oh, it's got to be 2. 2 is the greatest common factor between these two. So I will take a 2 out. Uh, what times 2 gets me 8n? That would be 4n plus 11 times 2 would get me to 22. We can check. That would be 8n plus 22. That is correct. Let's move on to the next one. 4i plus 10i cubed. Um, I see a number that is common between them. That would be 2. So 2 can be factored out. And there is a single i that is common between them as well. Uh, so what times 2i would get me 4i? Just a 2 plus 5. And I need two more i's, so that's i squared. I can check to see if this is the correct answer. 2i times 2, that's 4i. And then 2i times 5i squared is plus 10i cubed. And that matches, so that's correct. We'll try the next example here. I believe I can fit it underneath, no problem. We have 4y squared plus 12xy plus 8y. Just from saying that, um, I have realized that y is common to all of them. So I'll pull out a y, but I know that x is not. Uh, and I also see that 4 is the greatest common factor between these, so let's pull that out as well. What times 4y gets you 4y squared? You just need a y in front. Plus what times 4y gets you 12xy? 3x. Plus what times 4y gets you 8y? You just need a 2. Let's check to see if that's the correct answer. 4y times y is 4y squared. 4y times 3x is plus 12xy. And then 4y times 2 is 8y. Our check proves that we're correct. Um, so there are now some problems for you to try. Um, go over those uh, and then come back for lesson four.